Throughout the course of the MonsterVerse, we've seen several titans make landfall in the modern age, and following closely behind them is a wake of utter destruction. Almost universally, the titans that we've seen in the modern day have been pitted against one another, and their battles cost hundreds of thousands of lives in the process. It's rare that we see allies who offer unconditional support to the titans without some sort of clash preceding their eventual team-up. Mothra, however, is very rare, and is the most notable exception to this rule. So today, Heralds of the Titans, let's talk about Mothra's origins, history, her bond with Godzilla, and her future in the MonsterVerse. Potential spoilers lie ahead for the new empire. So with that said, today, let us discuss the Queen of the Monsters, Mothra herself. For the sake of this video, we will be compiling a few of Mothra's origin stories in order to blend in the gaps that we need to cover her story in the MonsterVerse, as not all of Mothra's official origin has been revealed to us. However, we do believe that we know a substantial amount. Not only is Mothra one of the most loyal of the Titans, but she is also believed to be one of the most intelligent, capable of understanding complex concepts to a degree that several other Titans don't seem to be able to, and rivals the knowledge of the Kongs and far exceeds the knowledge of the typical Gojira. It is also Mothra's intelligence that allows her to have a unique relationship to the humans and form a deep bond with humanity. In the novelization for the King of the Monsters, it is implied that Mothra was present at the Castle Bravo before the humans launched their expedition and their initial search for Godzilla, and that it was actually her who led them to his resting place. This of course allowed them to revive him so that he could rise against King Ghidorah and restore order to the Titan ecosystem. This implies that Mothra understands the concept of common goals, alliances, and that humanity has the capability of helping Godzilla. We also know that Mothra has a well-established concept of death, and that this is because of her own ability to reincarnate herself. Mothra is one of the only titans that we know of which could be classified as truly immortal, and she does this by embedding larva into the earth before her death being able to sense when the time is near. This Mothra then has the same memories, experiences, and abilities of the previous incarnations, making this essentially a reincarnation of Mothra, and that the very first Mothra from the dawn of her species' existence and this Mothra are one and the same. It's the same Mothra in the new body every single time, just with the gestation period between resurgencies. This could explain why we see her understanding the concept of self-sacrifice. Mothra knows her death is little more than a temporary inconvenience and could be the difference between Godzilla's victory or his defeat. Mothra throws herself in front of Ghidorah and willingly dies in order to empower Godzilla in their unique relationship, and this is likely how she could return in the new empire many years following her death. So then, where exactly does Mothra originally come from? What role did she play in the ancient days of the Titans as the queen of the monsters in the ecosystem? The Showa iteration of Mothra is home to a paradise region known as Infant Island. This falls under the protection of Mothra directly, and Infant Island is known as Mothra's home. The people there worship her as a benevolent moth goddess, and here, she is commonly associated with two twin priestesses, sometimes known as Elias or the Cosmos, who are able to translate for Mothra to her people. This is her kingdom, and she has protected it for generations against all those who would seek to conquer her domain. In the MonsterVerse, though, there is a version of Infant Island on the Yunnan Peninsula which has contact with one of the first Mothras, and seem to worship her in much the same way as the populace of Infant Island did in the Showa era. They were able to develop a mutual relationship with the Queen of the Monsters, and even constructed a temple with the express purpose of protecting her egg from any predators or titan threats. In exchange, the peninsula was off-limits to other titans, and Mothra would defend them from any titans that threatened their civilization, clearly marked as the home of the Queen of the Monsters. What we come to learn, though, is that Mothra not only protected them in a physical sense, but had the support of the rest of the titan ecosystem behind her, including the support of the Gojira and even from Godzilla himself. In the distant past of the MonsterVerse, we know that Mothra was regarded as the queen, which indicates that she had a seat alongside Godzilla as one of the primary alpha titans in the universe. 
their relationship eventually evolved into a strong symbiosis, one that became more sturdy than just about any other relationship between titans, as the two titans depended on one another and ruled the land as a unit. This symbiotic connection is even what allowed Mothra to resist the call of the Alpha when Ghidorah was believed to have usurped Godzilla as the king of the monsters, and her intrinsic duty and tie to Godzilla was so strong that she refused the Alpha call that the other titans would eventually bend the knee towards. This meant that the people of Yunnan not only had the protection of Mothra, but also Godzilla and all of their followers as well. And because of Mothra's connection to Godzilla, this made them the most protected civilization of all time. It seems that the Yunnan Peninsula may be the Monsterverse adaptation of Infant Island, and it's possible that the Yunnan people had similar priestesses to the Cosmos or Elias who could communicate with Mothra. But until we see more of this peninsula in the Monsterverse, this is just speculation. When the war with Kong eventually started though, where was Mothra? And what exactly did Mothra do when the Kongs and the Gojira went to war? Well, first off, it is believed that Mothra is a singular being and not a species. And rather, there is only one Mothra that exists in the Monsterverse at any given time, unlike the Gojira and the Kong. During the war with the Kongs, we know that Mothra directly protected Godzilla, but it's unknown what her relationship was with the other Gojiras. It's implied, though, that Mothra did take up arms against the Titanus Kong in the distant past. This leaves us to wonder exactly how she will respond if she does truly come back in the new empire, seeing that Godzilla Godzilla is working as an ally in Kong against others. The first time the Gojira fought the Kong, there was an entire race of Gojira to support Godzilla and Mothra. But now, it's Godzilla, Kong, and potentially Mothra against an entire colony of the Kong, not to mention Shimo. We see in the trailer that Kong himself is evenly matched against just the Scar King, so when he is faced against a horde of his own people, we're not sure how he could hold his own. It's interesting to note that we believe this pink energy from the depths of the Hollow Earth could potentially corrupt Godzilla and turn him into a much more malicious version of himself. But it's also been implied that Mothra can also absorb these Hollow Earth energies. But with Godzilla's more aggressive nature, what is most compelling about Mothra is her allegiances. She's been the most kind titan to all of humanity up until this point and it's unsure whether or not she will choose to protect her people or continue her symbiotic relationship with Godzilla if he chooses to fully turn against humanity and is driven to insanity, something that we know has happened before in the depths of the Hollow Earth with another legend of Gojira that eventually ate a star and was turned insane because of it. Again though, Mothra is one of the most intelligent titans in all of the Monsterverse and has an ability to understand complex concepts that other titans cannot. Hopefully Mothra will understand this, and her loyalty would drive her to wanting to cure Godzilla rather than fight by his side. But we will have to wait until the new Empire releases to find out for sure whether or not Mothra is back, how she is back, where she left her egg, and how she has evolved so far. The conflict comes to a head now, and it seems apparent that no matter how many lives Mothra goes through, she will always remain loyal to Godzilla up until this point as he is the king and she is the queen, and their symbiotic relationship has allowed them to win countless victories over millions of years now. Mothra is absolutely one of the most powerful, and more so, one of the most important titans in all of the Monsterverse. But anyway my friends, what do you think of Mothra, her domain in the Monsterverse, her abilities to make Godzilla far more powerful than any other version of the Gojira has ever been? In what future do you think Mothra holds in this beautiful franchise? As always, my friends, thank you so much for visiting the channel today, and I hope you're having an amazing one.